Oh, good afternoon. Thank you all for sticking around. Apologize for the technical difficulties that were had on my end. Um, hope everybody can hear me okay and hope everybody's having a great day out there. Uh, if you can give a thumbs up in the chat, that would be great to let me know you're present and you're there. And everything's good. Hope everybody's doing well. So, what I would like to do today is talk a little bit about mindset and skill set while we're going through this process. I know that we are a little bit stuck for time, but I'm here now and I would like to make sure that I bring value to you in the period of time that I have with you. So, today when we look at the job market, people are looking for a human connection, but they're looking also to establish their value and who they are and what they're all about. When it comes to establishing your value, you have to come from an authentic place today because people today don't have the luxury of time to be able to um, fake it until they make it. We have to be authentic up front. And this human connection is coming from the lens of what I call self-awareness. And the self-awareness is important to not just knowing who you are and what you have to offer, but also who you plan to become to the company that you're looking to bring value to. So when we look at the overall perspective of your confidence and self-esteem around the job market, it comes down to how you communicate your value and communicate your worth, right? Your communication comes down to number one, knowing what you want. Why do you want it? What is it that you want out of this career? What are you trying to achieve? What are you trying to attain? Number two, not just why you want it, but what are your short-term and long-term goals and benefits of this? How do you see the value of this helping you in the short and long-term? Number three, you wanna be able to plan your approach with a strategy to attack the job market with a vengeance because competition is really high today and the job market is in a position where the window of time is not that big. It's really a certain window space and you need to be able to fit yourself in that window of time and space in an effective way and an efficient way. The last two pieces of this component of what I'm sharing with you is called the strategy to be productive. And what requires you to be productive is the ability to take action by using what I call ABT, always be testing. And why does ABT be an, is, is an important aspect of your job search skill development is because there is no true science to finding a job today. It's an actual art. And you have to be able to test and try different things. Now, when it comes to testing and trying different things, this can come down to the idea of looking at job descriptions, looking at your qualifications, matching your pro your qualifications, being able to package yourself in a way that um, value proposition is intriguing to get your foot in the door for an interview. Because when you have the understanding of that, you can then look at opportunities where you're developing these strategies to conduct this type of approach over a three to four week period. And then you can look back and then assess reset and move forward in the progress of your job search as you're making these adjustments, right? So when you look at the idea of making adjustments now, you have to give yourself time because there isn't like a quick fix to securing employment today. You've got to be patient, and but you have to be patient with a work ethic that allows for you to see progress that's measurable so that you in turn can take what you've learned and then find a way to, if you will, assess the value proposition approach and assess the outcomes, meaning what are they saying? Are you getting interviews? Are you not? Are you getting interviews but not closing those interviews to get the job or not? So that reevaluation piece is vital to making sure that you understand those steps. Now, in addition to that, you want to be able to navigate your feelings and emotions through this pandemic. And really today, most people are in a position to, what I'd like to say, 80% of today's battle is a mindset 
And then 20% is skill set because you can always, you know, develop the skills. But if the mind's not there, you can forget it. So when you're going through life now, the first step around navigating your feelings and emotions with the pandemic is stay true to who you are. Know who you are. Don't just know what your value proposition is, but know who you are. Because today, people want to see how you can marry both who you are as a person and who you are professionally and marry the two, right? Because that leads to people investing in people, not investing, or if you will, investing in credentials, right? Because you could have all the credentials in the world, but be very toxic to the culture. So people want to see who are you on both sides. Number two, you want to have a proper approach to looking at the job market. I always like to encourage people to start wide and shallow and then go narrow and deep. The way how you go wide and shallow is by looking at all jobs that pertain to the qualifications that you meet and then start going narrow into specifics of jobs that intrigue you or get your attention. Number three, you want to have a planning or an action step item that allows for you to take action so that you could measure the the results and feedback that you're getting, right? Because the actions and the habits that you establish lead to a couple things here that I've written down for you. Number one, you want to research the industry. Know what the industry is all about. Know the language. Know what know what the the benefits are of this company being in the marketplace and why you want to associate with them. Number two, you want to be able to conduct what I call informational interviews with like-minded individuals, those individuals who have the results that you're looking for. Number three, you want to be able to network and build strong relationships using either LinkedIn or you can do, if you have guest speakers that you're attending an event for, maybe connect with them on LinkedIn and then set up a time to do a virtual coffee to learn more about them. And when you can have those kind of pieces in place to take action in your planning, it's going to give you that narrow and deep perspective, right? The next point here is being able to look at prevention around finding a job today. You see, looking for a job is a job. So what we need to do is maintain a certain productivity here that allows for us to stay active. You see, prior to the pandemic, it might have been normal to maybe apply when looking for work, maybe 10 jobs a week. But now you probably have to do 20 to 30 jobs a week if you can, right? It's all about perspective, though. Balance out the perspective with the priority of looking for work. Because if there's an urgency there, you're going to do whatever it takes. If it's not as urgent, you might not apply for 10 jobs a week or 20 jobs a week. You might just only apply for five. So it depends on the individual. And then one of the best practices that I can promote and share with you here around you being able to navigate your feelings through the pandemic when looking for work is develop a spreadsheet that can be your accountability partner. Develop a spreadsheet that allows for you to track things such as who you reached out to, what companies you applied jobs to and for, what roles were they, what were the dates and times, did I do any informational interviews with anyone? Track those in a spreadsheet because if your life is worth living, then it's worth recording, all right? The next point here is develop a master copy resume that allows for you to customize a resume to meet a job description. Always remember, It's all about what's in it for the company. So you have to be ready, willing, and able to put yourself in a position where you're branding yourself to meet the qualifications of what's written on a job description. You can no longer say, I have all of these skills, and today expect someone to sit at a desk who's getting over 100 resumes per day to read your resume to to draw out your value. Now your value proposition has to come from you making your your resume organized where your bullet points and what they're looking for is conveyed as the first two bullet points on your resume so that they're not searching. They found it because most people today are using a resume as a skim, a scan to see if the person actually meets the job requirements. And then if the person does, they will invite them out for an interview of some kind right? And then they will go through the resume with a fine tooth comb. But it's up to you to make sure that you develop your resume in a way where you're moving things around to fit 
the job description qualifications. I always like to say if you can meet anywhere between 70 to 90% of the job qualifications, that's a great job to apply for, right? So the quality of how you package yourself leads to potential quality opportunities, right? When you learn how to package your value where it's customized to benefit the person on the other side, that's when the attention and potentially more opportunities to engage through an interview will increase. But if you just don't take the time to, as I mentioned earlier, conduct research, know the industry, know the companies, know the role, know that you meet 70 to 80% of the qualifications, understand where your value is going to be, you know, packaged on your, in your resume to demonstrate that you are the ideal candidate, right? These are little things that add up to big things later where people can either become inspired to go out and look for work or become demoralized and say, it's too much. I'm sick of this and complain about not doing anything because it's too hard. Right. Anything that is hard is worth doing. So when it comes to the job market, it is crucial for you to make sure that you're packaging your value like a business, like you are one entity of a business and you're branding yourself on paper. And that that will allow you to get your foot in the door so that you can share and not sell your value in an interview when you share your value in an interview it means that you're having a conversation. When you're selling your value to an interview, right? It means you're trying to convince. People no longer want to be convinced anymore. They want to be inspired. The best way to inspire is have that human connection that allows for you now to bring that value out and then to demonstrate how they and both you can create that win-win outcome of working together. So in closing, I really believe that today it comes down to your attitude because your attitude will determine your altitude on how high you'll go. And if you're feeling that your attitude is not on point or it's not there, then I believe it's important for us to reassess our attitude, conduct a self audit, look at where the mental blocks are decide if we need support or help with that and then make a decision on how to move forward in your progress towards employment and future opportunities right so last but not least learning new skills learning new approaches takes time excuse me takes time and because it takes time you must be patient with yourself because the patience that you provide for you will allow for you the opportunity to be able to work through each and every day of finding a job, looking for a job, trying to get that job, right? It won't be easy, but I can probably guarantee you with some of the steps that I've shared with you here, it will change because to me, life is about progress, not perfection. So we have to be in a mindset of where do we pivot and how do we pivot? What things can I test out that works for me and what things don't? And then how do I make those um, adjustments in being able to stay relevant to my development and also stay relevant to the marketplace? Because when I understand that, that's what's gonna help me progress and move forward. So thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity uh, to really connect with you all. Please feel free to connect with me through LinkedIn. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have along the way um, or on LinkedIn on a one-to-one -one session. And uh, yes, thank you and all the best to you all on your journey, your employment journey, but also your personal development journey. Uh, because we have to understand that it's about human connection today. And to be a human being is what people are looking for. And that is what elevates you to the next level, connecting the humanities with your qualifications and professionalism. So I wish you all all the best. So thank you so much. Are there any questions?
I'm here to see if there's any questions you may have. Happy to answer any questions. Once again, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm always happy to chat and engage with you. You can unmute yourself if you have any questions. I'm happy to, to hear and listen. Okay, folks. Well, since I don't see any questions out there today, I do appreciate you all sticking around. Um, and I look forward to, you know, connecting with you all at some point. And thank you for listening. And thank you for your time. Have yourselves a great day. Bye for now.